Well, hey, this is Darren with My RV Works. Uh, good evening. It's dark outside <laughs> and it's getting darker. What is it? It's uh, eight o'clock at night. So I um, had some time to uh, sit around, review some of the questions that um, my team has put together for us to review for you guys. So uh, this one's coming from Dave. It involves a Schwintech slide room. And um, so he's got a Schwintech, uh, he's got a, a Jayco with a Schwintech. And when he hits the button, um, both motors will start to go out in about two inches, then a Schwintech will stop. He's still able to get it in and out, but it always goes two inches at a time. And um, uh, let's see, his voltage is good on both motors, he states. And the controller does not seem to have any kind of an error code or a fault code. And he's even tried to hold the button sync. It, it says, I've also tried the hold button to sync method. I'm not exactly sure how that interprets because there is a way to synchronize these motors. And uh, so we'll talk about that in my answer here. And um, any suggestions? Okay, so I think I might be able to help you on that one, Dave. Um, so uh, the first thing I'm going to want you to do now, this is I'm about to say something that Schwintech, or I'm sorry, Lippert is going to counter. Lippert's going to tell you not to do what I'm about to tell you to do. And um, there's a big debate on the internet. I've had people talk to me about it, and I here's here's my take, and it has to do with lubricating these these slides here. Lippert's going to say never lubricate these at all under any circumstances. Don't put anything in them, and I'm going to say that you should always lubricate these things, but but not with just old anything, but lubricate it with this product here. I'll make a link down below, um, and so. Here's my take. I mean, Lippert has changed the design on this thing multiple, multiple times. As a field repair guy, it's almost impossible for me to stock parts because they've changed the bearing blocks. I've got a box of bearing blocks. I should have grabbed that. Uh, the bearing blocks are thicker or thinner. Um, the shoes, their they're, they're little fin on the shoe goes up or goes down or has a slot. Um, it's like, make up your mind on how you want these things to work. It's just ridiculous. So I have to stock all these individual pieces, parts, because I never know what I'm going to run into in the field. And their drive shafts are starting to change. They used to be a little round with little slots at every corner. Every corner it's round. Um, and now they're going through a steel drive shaft. The drive shaft used to be aluminum. Now it's steel, more like a stop sign. And it's like there's so many different design changes going on with these twin techs. And it's, it's, it's I'm making me wonder. I love you, Lippert. I really do. But why are we changing the design on this system every couple months, it seems? And um, so with my position on lubricating this, I love you, Lippert. I'm not saying this to be mean or anything, but it's like, who are you going to listen to? I'm talking to the, the end user now. Who are you going to listen to? The engineer that is designing this over and over and over and over and over again. It seems like every couple months they come out with a new design. You can listen to them tell you how to fix this thing when they keep redesigning it. Or you can listen to the guy that has fixed hundreds of these systems in the field. Hundreds of them. Hundreds of these Swintech systems. So it's kind of like I've seen their failures. I, I know how they fail, and I'm the one that comes in and fixes it. And, and I'm the one that is telling you to lubricate it. So it's up to you who you're going to listen to. The engineers at Lippert that mean well, I've been to a lot of their schools, and I know quite a few of the people there, and they're telling you not to lubricate it, or the guy in the field that is going to fix a problem when you didn't lubricate it, and you call me to fix it. So there, I'm off my soapbox. Okay, let's everybody get along here. And so, Dave, your problem is that your slide room is going out two inches and come in and stopping. So the first thing, this is Darren speaking, which is counter to what Lippert's going to tell you. The first thing I want you to do is get a can of this uh, Power Lube with PTFE. It's Teflon. Okay, now we're going to get all the haters saying don't use Teflon because it never degrades. Okay, then, then you go use something else. But what Darren's going to tell you to use is this product right here because I know it works. Okay, and so I'm going to get a little close up here. What I want you to do is I want you to get into this slot right here where that shoe profile uh, is going to run. So you're going to have a plastic shoe right in here. This is where I want you to lubricate all in this. Okay. You don't need to lubricate the teeth at all. I want you to lubricate inside of this channel here. That's the key that they say don't and Darren says do. So you're going to lubricate this track. That's, that's the key on all these things that I've fixed. Um, and uh, then you're going to lubricate the ceramic wheel that's going to roll in this bottom groove here. And then, uh, and then on the bearing block, I wish I had a bearing block around here. I just, I know I've got them. I just don't see one around uh, anywhere. And the part of the problem, I don't have a bearing block with me because I, I don't have one with me. I mean, geez, I, they break all the time. 
But if you were to move that thing back and forth, that thing should be nice and smooth going back and forth. If you don't lubricate it, it's a hard plastic against aluminum coefficient of friction with the aluminum and the plastic. It's gonna sometimes get kind of hard and now you're gonna have broken spur gears. You're gonna break the little fin off that has a little plastic shoe. Um, I don't think you're gonna burn up your motor, but your motor might fatigue a little bit because it's working really hard. So Dave, lubricate that. That's the first thing you're gonna have both sides top and bottom so you're gonna have four unless you have a triple slide or triple on either side but anyway lubricate them okay great that's your first step to recover from the problem that you're having okay i think the problem that you're having is it's working too hard and i also don't think that it's synchronized now the next thing you're going to do is you're going to either bring your room all the way in or all the way out in my example we're going to come all the way in okay so you're going to come all the way and you're going to use your ears this time you need to be, everything needs to be quiet, no barking dogs or screaming kids, or wives telling you how much they love you, uh, about how much of a hero you are, okay? So what you need to listen for is those motors amping out at the same time. That's key, okay? You need to keep doing this. So you're going to go out with your wall and bring it back in a little bit, and you need to hear those motors that go ee and you wanted to hear them both amp out at the exact same time, okay? If one goes a little bit before the other one, then it's not synchronized. Think about the controller. That controller needs to see these motors peak and, and, and amp out and then drop at the same time. That is the definition of synchronization in Darren's mind, okay? I would expect, Dave, what you're experiencing is these motors, they're not amping out at the same time, and I would expect that one side's a little bit more lubricated than the other, and so they're fighting each other and they're getting out of, of step a little bit. If you took at those motors and you snap off a little, take a motor out and you snap off the, the cover on them. I do have a motor right here. Right here. Okay, and you look in the top of this thing, you're gonna see this thing that's spinning and it's like a little Hall effect sensor. It's basically spinning around and you got two of these motors and it's like left, right, left, and they're marching. Okay, so that controller wants to see everybody in sync. So they're counting these things and yours might be getting off just a little bit. Why? Because maybe one side's working too hard. Maybe because it's not lubricated, I don't know. Lubrication, bring your room in, listen, Keep doing that. Listen until those motors amp out at the same time. Now, how does a motor get out of sync? Because people are running them out, and as soon as they get out, they stop it before the wall touches. So Darren's counsel to you people is that you people. What do you mean you people? I love you guys. Darren's counsel to my friends here, <laughs> nice recovery, dude, is when that wall goes out, you keep your finger on that button and count to three. Okay, let the controller stop the motors, not you. Okay, that controller needs to see those motors amp up and then get amped out and then it drops it down. Let that controller do that. Don't you do it. If that wall starts to go out or in and you stop it before that controller has a chance to amp it out, then it's going to get out of synchronization every time. Okay, so for all of you guys that have this problem of going out two inches and stopping going out in two inches, it's not really faulting the motor. It's just saying, okay, I guess I'm amped out. Okay, and, and amping a motor out is not a fault. Okay, so maybe that's why it's working so hard. It's it burning too hard. It might get up like 12 or 13 amps when uh, five or six is where it needs to be, and it just stops. It's like, okay, I guess I'm, I'm, I guess I'm where I need to be. So lubricate these things, make sure they slide nice and easy. Um, uh, run your motor in and out a couple of times. Run your room in and out to get all that nice lubricant all in all, in all of your tracks and everything. And then you listen. When that room goes all the way in or all the way out, we want those motors to amp out at the same time and then let that controller stop and keep your finger on that button for an extra three seconds and then you take your finger off every time you run your slide room. If you have to run it out a little bit to get to that drawer to get that pair of socks you need so badly and you don't need to run all the way out because there's a tree there, that's fine. Just the next time or two that you do it, just make sure that you bring it in and out. Dave, I really hope that that's all this problem is. I have done service calls where the same exact problem is and it's because it was out of synchronization and those motors weren't amping out at the same time and they weren't lubricated. And I've done dozens of calls like that. And uh, they think there's something majorly wrong and all it needed was lubrication and to be synced with in and out. And when I talk to the customers, they're like, oh, well, when it basically gets to the time, I stop it. No, 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 let the controller stop it. So, hey, I hope this helps. Leave some comments and back on um, some of your experiences and maybe we'll make more videos from this type of a problem on these 
Lippert Inwall System, aka Schwinn Tech. Okay, so this is Darren and Joyce Washington. We're happy campers say my review works, and we hope that from all these little videos or answering people's questions, our goal is to make you be a happy camper. So you can support us on Patreon. Um, you can uh, subscribe to our channel, give us a thumb up, share it with your friends, and just hang out with us on YouTube. We've got over 100 videos, 160 videos at this point, and uh, there may be some tips and tricks in there that we've shared on the field. We've maybe done a repair or something like that, um, and that might be very helpful for you guys when you're out in the field. So this is Darren from Joyce signing off until our next video. Thank you for your time and thank you for watching. Okay, bye-bye.